student got a perfect score in cell babe she says thank you for all your videos i bought the 49 dollars program and it was it was amazing thanks a lot and i appreciate your comment and guys this course is available down in the description it is the best course online for cell babe with a money back guarantee so check it out in the description also today we're going to look at a speaking test and a writing test what i'm going to do here is a new topic and something that i should have done a long time ago it is a very important topic I'm going to talk about brainstorming before all speaking questions and before all writing questions and tell you what you need to think, how you need to program your mind to get ready for the points that are about to come. This helps your marks for task response, for structure, for organization, and most importantly, with tone in speaking as we will start with speaking because once you take that deep breath and you're ready to start as soon as the recorder starts, you develop a good first impression to the examiner and you also become confident if the first sentence goes well. And you also know exactly what you're about to say in the entire speaking time and this just helps you gain marks after marks and marks. Let's have a look at this test. This first question says talk about one of your best friends. If you have done cell pip, you know you should not pay attention to that because that is a warm-up question with no marks. This is where the First question actually starts, your dad is struggling with weight gain, advise him how he can develop some healthy eating habits to fight obesity. Now remember, when you actually talk to your dad, are you going to take a pen and paper and write down notes when you're giving advices? You absolutely won't. And this is what I tell students when they say that they should take notes while there's the preparation time. One thing is, you will be super unnatural if you do so. The other thing is you don't even have enough time. 30 seconds is barely enough time to read the question and try to understand what I'm going to talk about. And then even if you do take notes, you most likely won't even look at them when you're speaking. Because when you're speaking, you're tense, you're looking at the time, you're looking at your points. You can just refer to notes and remember what you wrote. So don't bother and don't think about more than one point. So these th tips that I'm going to give you, they're going to set you up so nicely. Once you practice with these, you'll see the difference. What I'm going to tell you here is imagine you're a real dad. And if you don't have a dad, imagine someone else's dad. Imagine a dad, okay? And imagine a fat, obese dad who needs to lose weight. And what suggestions would you give to this person, which is your dad? Just start with one, okay? So the first suggestion I would give is controlled diet, right? That's it, and trust me, in 30 seconds, this is all you can think about. The structure for this question is to have three points, right? You can't think about three points, it's not possible. Even if you do, you'll forget the other two. Just remember the first one and start with that. Hey dad, how's it going? I heard that you have some problems regarding your obesity and the doctor is giving you a deadline to fix this. Firstly, I think you should start by controlling your diet and and so on. So here you have a great flow. And once you start with that, trust me, points number two and three will flow naturally as long as you start confidently. This question is key. If you get this wrong, you derail your entire momentum. And that's why the first 15 seconds of this question are important. So just think about the first 15 seconds, the first point only. The other two points will come as you're talking, because that happens naturally as well. You don't necessarily have to think of them. Now, let's go to the next one. This question is talk about your favorite movie. And again, this is so much that it'll take 30 seconds just to read it. I always recommend students not to even pay attention to these wordings. Usually they just talk about the same point more, favorite movie, like talk about a time when you watched it recently or you watched multiple times. Obviously, I'm gonna talk about a movie that does that. So it's useless, save your preparation time, Just Look at this sentence and now think about a real movie. This scenario should always be real and all of us have gone through the favorite movie, the favorite vacation, the favorite uh, leisure time, etc. Think about a real time. Think about two to three points only. This is a one minute question, part two. You don't have enough time to talk about too many things. So just two to three points or at the start, just two points are more than enough to get you started. Not more if you do more than five to six points, Trust me, you're going to have very short points with low quality. Instead, focus on few points with more quality. When we look at picture questions, parts three and four, all you got to do in the preparation time is look at three to four things in the picture, three to four main things. Again, you want to define them with quality in the most amount of time. 
in 40 seconds or so, you want to just focus on three to four points. In the remaining time, you can focus on everybody else. So here in this picture, there's a lot going on. And obviously, this lady in the center deserves attention. She's one person I'm going to mention. And this person looks pretty devilish, so I'm going to mention him too. This guy looks like George Washington, and he looks pretty calm in all the chaos. I'm going to mention him too. And if I were to do a fourth thing, probably going to mention this kid because he's the only kid among all adults who are in a, a state of anarchy or a chaos. So that's it. That's all I'm going to think about. I'm going to look at one, two, three or one, two, three, four and get started. When it comes to comparison and persuasion part five, you want to pick in the first minute one of the two options that the computer presents. Always pick the option that has less words because you would have to say everything when the time starts. So better use something that has less words. You would have to speak lesser and also vocabulary is understood. Here so far, everything looks okay. But if there's some word that you don't understand, just ignore that point because you will not be able to explain it well. Now, let's say you picked extra studies. This is the next minute where you're still preparing for one minute. Here you want to find opportunities where you can combine sentences. So how can I combine some sentences here? Let's see. This says will reduce the if you have extra studies, it will reduce the stress of studying for the next exam versus sports. And that is great for health and chance to meet people too. Maybe I can say something like, hey, look, extra studies will obviously help for the next exam, but let's not ignore the value of good health and mind for your exam, as well as a chance to socialize just to refresh your memory, just to refresh your brain a little bit for your next exam. So here you can compare different points in one sentence. And I want to find opportunities in my preparation time because it is extremely hard in one minute to say everything. So what you're looking to do here is to find exactly what sentences you can combine. So you ensure you finish everything in one minute by combining sentences effectively. That's what you do in the prep time in part five. When it comes to part six, you have to pick one of the two options. It's usually explaining a difficult scenario. In this case, your partner and his friends or her friends are hanging out with you. You all want to go watch a comedy movie in the cinema, but your partner prefers a horror movie. So convince your partner to watch a comedy movie or convince your friends to watch a horror movie. I'll convince my partner and all I got to do is think about two points. The third point is usually the apology or the reasoning. So if I want my partner to watch a comedy movie, I'm going to tell her you won't have nightmares. And the other thing is it'll be lighthearted. So we'll have a good time instead of a terrifying time. Two points only. That's enough. The third point usually is apology. Like I apologize. I know you wanted this, but I prefer we do this for our health, mental health sake and so on. So after that, it's easy to follow. After that, you just do the conclusion. One minute is over. OK, so not more than two points need to be thought of there. Once again, part seven is very similar to part one because these are the only two questions with 90 seconds. What you would do here is again, look at the question, come up with an opinion and one point only. You are, you're supposed to do three points here in this speaking section because it's 90 seconds. But just think of one. Think of one point and your opinion and start with that. If you hit that nicely in the first 15 seconds, the rest of it will be easy to follow and you'll be able to come up with two and three points later on while you're speaking. So it's very similar to part one. But one more tip I'm going to leave you with here is when you think about points two and three, use words like moreover, apart from that, in much the same way. So when you use these connectors before you're about to state your second or third point, you have thinking time and you can use this to think about the next point you're about to say. And that's where the point usually comes. It takes only one to two seconds. It's not a long time. Lastly, this one. OK, here there's a problem. A lot of you just explain the picture like you would explain parts three and four. However, you're required to think about the situation and explain the picture. So here you're calling the zoo owner and explaining what you see. OK, so make sure you address that person first and also assume how you would be in the situation. So I'm going to paint a picture. I'm going to say I'm going to think that I'm visiting the zoo with my family today and it's a bright sunny morning. And here's what I see in the reptile enclosure. So I'm shocked. That's my feeling. And I am trying to think about the zoo owner and the lizard like the zoo owner will lose a reptile and the rep reptile will be dead. So because of this panic, I'm calling the zoo owner. Now, painting this picture in my mind about the scenario helps me how I'm going to start by saying this. Hello there. My name is Sean. I wanted to call and talk about this 
situation that's causing a lot of panic right now in the zoo since one of your key reptiles might lose their life since a cat has entered the enclosure. It's the bright morning, which is why a lot of cats are around this time roaming in the enclosure. And this one just found its way inside. The reptile is terrified and so on and so on. So you see how I was able to paint the picture, which would include the elements of the question, calling the zoo owner, describing the scene as well, and then getting into more details of the picture, like the reptile is scared, etc. Everybody, we are selecting lucky winners to whom we can give these mock tests for free, as well as a free assessment. So all you gotta do is comment down below, like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. Lucky winners will be selected at random and you'll get access to our free training. So comment down below, like the video to enter this offer.